I'm Lynn Jarvis, contributing editor for Across the Fence, and I'm joined by WCAX TV Sharon Meyer for a visit to Europe in countries that were once part of the former Yugoslavia that was dissolved back in 1992. Because of the violence, few visitors came here, but now that has dramatically changed. To give you an idea of where we are, here's a map that shows the former Yugoslavia and it's now broken up into several different countries. Now we're visiting from south to north Albania, Montenegro, Croatia and Slovenia. Since the breakup of Yugoslavia some 25 years ago, the region's become a tourist mecca attracting millions of visitors each year that are now a big part of their economy. And we think you'll see why as you join us for this adventure along the historic and beautiful Adriatic Sea. Today we'll begin in the historic Croatian city of Dubrovnik. Despite being a protected World Heritage Site, Yugoslav forces inflicted heavy damage and loss of lives in the early 1990s when Croatia declared its independence from Yugoslavia. Thanks to donations from the international community and a $2 million annual budget, Dubrovnik has slowly been restored to its former glory. On our way to the ancient wall surrounding the city, we were drawn to the sounds of Luca playing the Ligeritsa, a three-stringed instrument often used to accompany traditional dances of the region. James, all the way from Minnesota, couldn't resist. The walls are breathtaking as no other place in the world has such a perfectly maintained architectural treasure. The full circuit of ramparts clocks in at just under a mile and a half. Along with gorgeous views, there are many other details you notice along the way, like laundry hung out to dry, and a peek at an elderly couple with one of the best pieces of real estate around. Just look at their view of the St. Lawrence Fortress, that dates back to the early 1300s. The rooftops are a clue to Dubrovnik's character. At first glance, they are the perfect match for the gleaming limestone streets. The neatly overlapping red and orange tiles seem so deliberate and are the perfect coating on the city's irresistible beauty. That is, until you realize the lighter colored tiles are scars from the shelling blitz during the Balkan War. Except for those who were here, that's a distant memory and now Croatia is reaping the benefits of its beauty and historic charm. We decided to stop for lunch, but we happened to arrive at just the wrong time. Watch and see what happens. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> After all that, we still had time to explore some of the treasures that are found within the 800-year-old walls of Dubrovnik. In the distance is the bell tower of the Franciscan Church. It houses a library containing 1,200 rare manuscripts and may have been the first pharmacy in Europe open to the general public. Its beautiful cloister is unique with thin dual columns topped with different figures such as animals and floral arrangements. This is the Church of the Holy Savior that was built after a devastating earthquake in 1520 as a gesture of thanks from the survivors. The Renaissance wheel window makes it easily recognizable in the bright afternoon sun. For you fans of the TV show Game of Thrones, it was filmed here and this is the stairway used for that memorable walk of shame sequence. Next, we walk down to the old harbor where ships were once built. Known for their durability, Dubrovnik was a naval power with a fleet of more than 180 ships. Now it's a home for a flotilla of yachts and pleasure boats that can be hired for cruises that give you a whole new perspective of this ancient walled city and the opportunity to see the beautiful Adriatic sunsets like this. The next morning we had a surprise. Back in 1669, 
Dubrovnik sold a small strip of land to the Ottoman Empire as a military buffer. This land is now part of Bosnia and Herzegovina and is that country's only access to the Adriatic Sea. We stopped for a few minutes to take photos and crossed the border again back into Croatia on our way to Mekarska. This is typical of the scenery along the way. Markoska is a small and beautiful town and the perfect place to celebrate our very special occasion. More about that later. The town is located behind mountains which protect it from cold winds and is responsible for its rich Mediterranean vegetation. It grew around this natural harbor that has, for centuries, provided a safe haven for sailors, pirates, and merchants during stormy weather. Nowadays, it does the same for yachts, sailboats, and cruise ships, making it one of the most famous tourist destinations on the Croatian coast. And just happened to be where Sharon and Rennie would celebrate their 29th wedding anniversary. I was at their wedding, and it's hard to believe the years have passed so quickly. Sharon had the chicken filet mekeska, and Rennie very much enjoyed the pies cavesa. After lunch, they sealed the deal with a kiss for all the world to see. Next came Split, home of the historic Diocletian's Palace, one of the most imposing Roman ruins still in existence. This is the bell tower. It was built by Diocletian in the 4th century as a retirement home using gleaming white stone with construction taking nearly 10 years. Through the north gate, we entered what is now called Old Town, covering about 20 square miles and is home to some 3,000 people and many businesses. This is what it looked like back then with some 220 buildings along narrow streets, courtyards, and passageways. During the time of Diocletian, these basement halls were the entrance into the palace from the sea. Boats were able to dock in front of these arches and drop off supplies or receive noble guests. Nowadays, they house souvenir shops and are used for such events as art exhibitions and weddings. As we left, I saw what I had been looking for, a 3,500-year-old Egyptian granite sphinx imported from Egypt. Of the 13 that Diocletian brought from Luxor, just three remain at the palace. Well, in spite of the torrential rains, we are excited to be at Plitvice National Park here in Croatia. It's a natural wonderland of 16 interconnecting lakes and thundering waterfalls in a primeval forest covering more than 73,000 acres. It's celebrated as one of the most beautiful sites in Europe, even in the rain. It became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1979. Enjoy it along with us and stay dry at home. Maria di Ligrazi Cambrazza porta li grazie, e ni ti avvenu pi grazie, oi Maria, fammi grazie, fammi grazie, oi Maria, la difficile eterno pace, difficima ti di Dio, fammi grazie, oi Maria, Maria di li grazie, cambrazza porta li grazie, e ni ti avvenu pi grazie, oi Maria, fammi grazie. Fammi grazie, oi Maria, che è difficile eterno pa, c'è difficile ma ci di Dio. Fammi grazie, oi Maria, oh Maria, oi Maria, e tu sai li nostri guai, e se non aiuti tu, oh Maria, aiutani tu, oh Maria, oi Maria, e tu sai li nostri guai, e se non aiuti tu, oh Maria, aiutani tu. By the time we get to Opatia, the rain had stopped and we were welcomed by this local musician. Just miles from the border of Slovenia, Opatia lies in the Gulf of Kvarner and is a popular summer and winter resort. Known as the Pearl of the Adriatic, it's a beautiful place with a long history of tourism dating back to 1844. The Slantina Fountain, located in the middle of town, is a nice spot to relax and enjoy the warm afternoon sun. The 
The next morning, we arrived in Slovenia and met up with Olga. Can you imagine the stories she could tell? If only we had a translator. We are now at the Postona Caves. It's a network of underground passages, galleries, and chambers, and it's the largest and most visited cave in Europe. We're going to ride on a specially designed cave train to see stalactites and stalagmites and much more. Let's climb aboard. In 1819, Archduke Ferdinand visited the caves and declared them an official tourist destination. In 1872, the trains were added to make it easier to explore. In 1884, electricity was installed to help attract more tourists that now exceeds some 37 million people a year. About three and a half miles of this two million year old cave, hauled out by the Pivka River, are open for exploration. You disembark the train at Great Mountain Caves and continue the rest of the way on foot. From the Valenka Gora Caves, you continue across the Russian bridge built by prisoners during the War of 1916. The tour continues through Winter Hall, past this 16-foot snow-white stalagmite known as Brilliant, the symbol of the Postana Caves. Then you enter the concert hall, where more than 500 performers put on a spectacular Christmas show every year. And wouldn't that be fun to see? The tour concludes at the Hall of Beautiful Caves, where you board the train to return to the entrance. What a spectacular place to explore, rain or shine. The last stop on our tour was the historic 11th century Bled Castle, and wouldn't you know it, it was another rainy day, but that just added to the beauty of the place. As we walked up the hill to visit the castle, we got nice views of the city nestled between the valleys of the Julian Alps. It is the oldest castle in the country and is currently one of the most visited tourist attractions in Slovenia. The castle is now a museum that houses artifacts and carvings from the 16th century. Bled is Slovenia's most popular tourist resort and on less inclement days, hiking and swimming are favorite activities. But this swan didn't mind the rain one bit and rather enjoyed having the place to herself. And there in the distance was our final destination, the iconic church of the Mother of God on the lake. Trying to keep dry the best we could, we boarded what are called pletna boats made by local crafters. They're flat-bottom boats with a pointed bow and a stern widened with a step, making it easier for us to enter. Rowing cannot be performed by just anyone. The title of Plenartsvo is kept in the family and handed down from generation to generation. Nick told us he usually makes six round trips a day, but with the rain, he's only done half that today. For Lynn, getting to ring the historic wishing bill was one of the highlights of his journey. While for Rainy, it was to witness the mechanism that operates the bells and chimes in full action. I'm Lynn Jarvis, and from Sharon, Rainey, Marco, and me, thank you for watching, and we look forward to having you with us on our next adventure right here on Across the Fence. <laughs>